today that is going on is the fact that I love this thing, Inner City Youth Foundation, because I know everything focuses back around our youth, because you all are our future. They are the future. Uh, the issue where we're seeing a problem more and more, and more is just the fact that the storyline of the young people uh, that they have has been misfocused. You know, a lot of us that are mighty racked and a little older, what made us so strong as African Americans is the storyline of old and black people that had a stronger value system. A lot of them were religious. But their storyline at least helped us, even though at times we went astray, but it kept us, you know, kept us, you know, where we needed to. But the storyline of the young people was being taken from rap and from their peers and from, you know, all these other images of whatever they feel, you know, they are. But there is a king in them, there is a king in them, there is a warrior in them, but the negative side of it is being reflected wrong in against each other. Yeah. You know, you can't prosper by destroying your own self in the image of someone else because we're all made in the image of God. Praise the Lord. So anyway, what I wanted to say was this. I wanted to share a little storyline with you that I think is very empowering. There was a man called Alan from the religious history perspective since I you know, I'm in history. I talk about the lost soul of the black people. When I talk to young people, I talk to them from the perspective of the lost soul of the black people. So there's some things there that we can draw from. So let me tell you about Alan. Alan, about 1730, he was a black man. He was born a slave, and his white slave master was like, he was the Secretary of State in the United States of America. And he was born on his plantation. And Alan, in 1730, he had a desire to be free. So what he ended up doing was his master, or master, was a white man that didn't have a problem with black folk being free. So what he did was he asked the question one day, Alan, do you want to be free? And this is something that he'd been praying about in his time. So what he ended up doing, he ended up working for his freedom. So he put his freedom in a certain amount of dollars, and what Alan did, he worked. He worked year in, year out, until he paid for his freedom. But after he got his freedom, that was along about the time of 1776 when America got its freedom from, you know, the European, you know, in, in Europe. So, but Alan had this vision as a black man that if I can be free, even though there were the blacks being enslaved all around him. But he had an opportunity through his prayer and his connection to God. He prayed, Lord, that he might be free. And God presented an opportunity for him to be free. So it made him desire to have that for his own also. So the way Adam was able to get this started, he started out, number one, in a situation where he was in the Methodist Church, and there was a prayer meeting, and at first the whites invited those free blacks to worship. But after 1776, after they got their freedom from the whites, then they turned on the blacks and said, well, you can't worship with us any longer because then slavery was prevalent. So what Alan and another guy named Absalom, his friend, they would come in and get on their knees and start praying, and uh, the, the white guy said, well, you see those Negroes? Get, get to go arrest them. They can't do this. They're not free to worship, but in the beginning they said they were free, but then they tricked them and turned on them and said that they, they, they couldn't have that freedom anymore. So because Adam was such a man that believed in the freedom of black men and in being a free black man during slavery and his friend Absalom, when Absalom got on his knees, they came back with the whites and they got a hold of him and said, get up, you can't pray here. Absalom 
protesting their acts of be resistant. I'm not getting up because I got a right in my soul. I got a soul, and I got a God that can hear me even if on the outside man is saying that I can't. You don't have a right to do this, but in my soul, I believe God is telling me that I can talk to Him, and so He resists. You know, they're disturbing and insulting. So, but what, Abs what Absalom did, he went to Ammon. He said, you know what, what we're going to do? We're going to take all the blacks in the Methodist church, in this church, and we're going to protest against you telling us that we don't have a right to worship God. So what we're going to do is we're not coming back and be subject to your worship practices that is discriminatory to our right spiritually. What we're going to do, we're going to march out of here, which is the first aspect, the first protest that you young people know about is Rosa Parks for civil rights, where she did what? She said what? And we said out. I don't care if I'm not. She protested. She resisted the system. Now, Absalom, on his knees, 200 years before Rosa Parks, resisted. He's the first protester 200 years before Rosa Parks. So what I'm saying is, sometimes the storylines are lost. And sometimes we reference history, and that's good too, but I want you to know, the protest against society starts in the soul of black religion. Not being the kind of men that, you know, I don't want the kind of man that, well, you know, whatever the white man taught me in religion, I'll just go along. No, we're not going along, even though you're white. Adam took them to court and went all the way to the Supreme Court, and they gave the rights. Whites came after they organized their own church in a blacksmith's room. Then the whites came and said, no, you don't have a right because you're going to have an economy. You're going to have money. Y'all going to take a offering. We ain't going to have the money. No, stop. Don't do that, Alan. But Alan continued to resist all the way to suing the whites in the Methodist church. And the end result was, in 1830, the birth of the first black denomination in America that was free to have its own commerce. Now, the reality is today, the reason why you see churches all around on the corner is because of Alan. <laughs> or you would never have had the freedom of worship that you experienced today. But it started with the protest in the church. Not being a passive Christian. Not being a Christian lily white. Well, you know, we ain't going to stay at the master. No, we don't say so. I'm 